We welcome you today to our service here at Double Branch, and we have another Sunday and another Sunday apart, and we hope that that will not continue too much longer, and yet I regret to have to tell you that we have canceled all services until further notice here at Double Branch. And um, we do encourage you, though, today to gather your families, if you're home by yourself, to come, get your Bible, be ready to worship the Lord in your heart, if you're there with other people, to ask them to come around, to listen to the service, but not just listen to the service, but maybe after the service to read the Bible as a family, to pray, to sing songs together and worship the Lord from our hearts. May the Lord bless you today as you watch our service. I want to read from Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 19. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Father, we do praise you today. We thank you, God, for your many mercies. We thank you, God, for your love for us. Lord, you have been a good God and a faithful God. Lord, we ask you that you would help us now at this difficult time that we face. Many people going through trials, Lord, we pray that your presence would be with them, Lord. We pray, our God, that you would help awaken this country and awaken your churches, Lord, to their lack, that they may seek you and may have your love poured out in their hearts and have your power to minister. God, we are weak people. Lord, we know not what to do. Let our eyes, though, be upon you. And Lord, we ask you for you are our only hope. We ask you that you would give us grace and mercy, Lord, and that you would strengthen us within the inner man. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Courtney is going to come and sing, lead us in a song this morning. We're going to sing to God be the glory. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father. Through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. O perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest 
best offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our victory, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Well, today we're going to look at something that may seem odd to you. Um, I'm going to preach about, should churches always obey the government? Should churches always obey the government? It's a very timely message, really. And we, we see things happening in our country. We see things being locked down. We see all this... Um, in, many, in, in some cases, tragic circumstances happening in our country. And we see the responses of churches and we see the responses of governments, both local and national now. And it's a very fair and good question for us to consider and to ask this morning, should churches always obey the government? And I hope not. And the reason I say I hope not is, is because the authorities in Jesus' day tried to kill him and wanted him to stop teaching. And yet Jesus left an example for us that at times it is right for us to not listen to government, but to listen to God instead. Should churches always obey the government? I hope not. Because the authorities told the apostles to stop speaking in this name. They said, we told you to stop speaking in this name, and yet you are persisting. Should churches always obey the government? I hope not, because we probably wouldn't have our English Bibles today if they did. Because authorities told people like William Tyndale that no, no, you cannot translate the Bible into the common tongue. You cannot do that. Should churches always obey the government? I hope not, because if they did, our religion today would not exist, my friends. If churches and Christians always did what the authorities on earth told them so. Now, I want to be clear, I am not calling for civil disobedience. I'm not doing that here in this area. I'm not calling for that. And we'll say more about that in just a little bit. But I am calling this morning for the church to realize who she is. Who is the church today? Are we simply a puppet being controlled by the government, being controlled by powerful men? Are we simply something that is, is dispensable? 
And my friends, it's time for the church to see that she is not dispensable. In fact, she is the very bride of Christ and she is very much under the authority of God. Well, I want to look at three main things this morning. And they're going to, they're going to surround, they're going to be in particular, three main passages that we're going to look at. The first one, if you have your Bibles at home, is in Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And I want us to see, and this is, if you're, if you're looking on the internet very often, this is a verse you'll probably see given many times by Christians today about why churches ought to close their doors because they're Local governments, perhaps, or their state government is demanding that of them. And not just them, but other organizations and businesses as well at times. Should we submit to the government? Well, generally speaking, the answer most certainly is yes. A Christian and a church should, generally speaking, submit to the government. Let's look here in Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. Now listen to this. For there is no authority except from God. God is the only authority, the Bible says. And those which exist are established by God. So you look at the governments today, you look at the local officials who've been elected, You look at those on a state level, national level, world level, across the world, different countries. You are looking at people who have been established and put in positions by God Himself. That does not at all mean that God approves of everything that's happening. God has His reasons for putting certain people in power. And yet the Bible clearly says here in verse 1 of Romans 13 that all the governmental powers that we have and that we are under are established by God. Government is not a man-made idea. It is a God idea. And I'm very thankful to live in the country we do. I'm very thankful for our police officers. I'm very thankful for the organization that we have in this country. It would be chaotic all the time if we didn't have these and those serving. Look in verse 2. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of of God. It is a fearful thing to disobey the government. For normally speaking, to disobey the government means that you are disobeying God Himself when you disobey the government. Now, some of you who are watching may know me personally very well. You've known me for a number of years, and you know I can be quite strict on, on obeying the government at times. And sometimes I've certainly went to, too far to one extreme on that. But one reason that I do take things like that seriously for the most part is because of a verse like this. To disobey the authorities that are above us, to disobey the government, is to disobey God Himself. Because it is God who has set that government and that person in position and those laws from that government that's over us, we owe our, we owe our obedience to Because ultimately, we're not obeying our local officials. We're not obeying our state officials. We're not obeying the national leaders. Ultimately, we are obeying God because God has established these positions. It says again in verse 2, Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. And I won't read the rest of the passage here in Romans 13. You can later if you want. So it is very very plain there in Romans 13 that churches and Christians and every single person is to obey the government. If you willfully and knowingly, without regard, just continually disobey the government, know this, you are sinning against God. 
You say, well, my conscience doesn't bother me. I know I'm rebelling against everything the government tells me to do. I know I'm cheating on my taxes, but my conscience doesn't bother me. Friend, then your conscience is very wrong. We are to submit to the government. We are to obey the authorities above us. We are to pray for our authorities. One thing I've been reminded recently is our authorities here, obviously on a national level, a state level, but here on a local level where we live at, many of us, our state officials, they need wisdom. They need people praying for them. And we ought to respect them. We ought to pray for them. We ought to love and care for them and, and to try to help them in the ways that are right. This is difficult times, indeed. So yes, one thing that you see here in this passage, and what you've seen many times probably if you're on social media, are people saying, look, Romans 13 says this, there it goes, we have to obey the authorities that are over us. Well, that is true, but as so often happens in Christianity, we have to see the whole biblical picture to understand what exactly God's will is. And this, though this is generally going to happen, and in our situation right now, our, our county, that again, I'm, I'm here preaching, I've got four people in front of me, my immediate family, and this, this empty room here, auditorium, sanctuary, I long for the day not only when people come back, but I long for the day if God blesses us to see many more people added to the church as well. Yes, I long for that. Our county right now has put limits on us. They have said that we cannot have more than 10 people meeting. And you know what? I'm happy to obey that right now. I think that's right. I think that's wise. Um, for our situation here right now, I, th I think that is fine right now. So yes, for the most part, churches ought to obey the governing authorities. And yet, I want us to turn to Acts 5 now. Acts chapter 5, and we must see this or we will not have a clear view of what the Bible teaches. There is submission to the authorities, and at the same time, there is disobedience to the authorities. Now listen to what Acts 5 says. Acts chapter 5, we'll start reading in verse 27. Acts chapter 5, verse 27. When they had brought them, they stood before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to continue teaching in this name. And yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. They say to the apostles, Listen, we told you what to do. We're the authorities. And you're not listening to us. You're not obeying us. We told you not to preach in this man's name anymore. What is wrong with you? Do you not recognize who we are? To which the reply. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must. Now look at what it says. We must. It's not optional. It's not enough for us to say, you know, we're really nice Christians. We're more kind than Peter and the apostles. No, the Bible says we must. We must obey God rather than men. Somebody says, but Brother Clint, what if people do that today, they'll be disobeying the government. And what I say is this. In certain situations, I would say this. No, no, no. You've got it wrong, friend. No. It's the government who's disobeying God. We are still obeying God. It's the government and leaders and authorities around us who have gone astray. They are disobeying God. Not that everything they do necessarily has to be agreeable with us. But now they are asking us and making us to disobey God Himself. We will not do that. Make that clear. God is king and you're not. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, this crisis that's happening in our country, if we're not careful, the government and, and certain sectors possibly of the government or certain areas of local and state governments, 
will try to take a stronger and stronger hold into Christian things and into the church. And the church must not allow that to happen. We must obey God and not man on these things. It's God who's the authority. Now, friends, again, I'm not saying we disobey. I've already said, for the most part, generally speaking, we want to be good citizens. Therefore, we obey our authorities. Yes, we pray for our authorities. We want the best for them. As churches, we want to obey the authorities as long as it is right to do. That is the general course that we are put under by God Himself. That's what He has told us. And yet, friends, if it comes, I'm not saying it's going to come to this, but if it comes to this, just say, for instance, and again, this is a fearful thing, friends. This is a fearful thing. But if it comes to it, where pastors and churches are saying, you know what, we don't see a threat anymore. We think it's right and good for us to meet again. And the government says, no, 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 you have to wait X amount of days or weeks or longer before you can. Friends, we have to obey God and not man. And like I said, I don't think that day has come for us here. Possibly in other places it has come, but not here, I don't believe. But friends, we have to understand our allegiance is not to the government. Ultimately, we are under them. We want to respect them. We want to obey them as far as we can. And yet... Our ultimate authority is God Himself. That's where we turn to now. Thirdly and lastly, I want you to turn to Psalm 2 with me. Psalm 2. How can it be that churches can at one time, and Christians can at one time submit to the government and then under a different circumstance not submit to the government? How can that be? And really I've already answered that question, haven't I? The government is not the ultimate authority over us. It is God-ordained, yes, but when government goes astray and rejects God and asks Christian people to disobey God, that's when we have to say, no, we cannot go that way with you. We cannot do that. We must obey the Lord. And Psalm 2 helps us see this. It helps us see that our great authority, our great authority, friends, is not the government, is not kings. It's not even our own will and our own desires. It's God and His Messiah, Jesus Christ. Psalm 2 is very, very... I was going to say very relevant. Friends, everything in the Bible is relevant today. You don't have to make the Bible relevant. It is relevant. Psalm 2 says this. Why are the nations in an uproar and the peoples devising a vain thing? Do you hear what it said there? Why are the nations in an uproar And the peoples devising a vain thing. What are the peoples devising? They're devising devising something that's going to ultimately fail. It's a vain thing. And what is this plan of theirs? This great plan that they have. The kings of the earth take their stand. And the rulers take counsel together. We have all these kings coming together. We have all these councils coming together. Well, friends, what what are they? Are they coming together to give aid to a nation in need? Are they coming together wisely to pray to God for guidance? Why are these nations and kings coming together in Psalm 2? The Bible says, The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed saying. Here you have are the mighty men, the the movers and shakers of our world. They are getting together to devise a plan against the Lord and against the Lord Jesus Christ. And what do they say? They say, let us tear their fetters apart and cast away their cords from us. Let us be done with their laws. Let us be done with their restraints. Let us be wild. Oh no, not wild. Let us just be enlightened and free. Let us show them that progression always leads to advancement. 
But what does God in heaven do? He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Look on down in verse 6. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. He has made the Lord Jesus Christ king. He is king of the church. That is why I'm a steward. That's all I am is a steward. But listen, as a steward and a manager, I cannot allow the church to be ran any way people want it to be ran. As a steward and a manager of God's heritage and His Word, I must try to manage and steward the church according to this Word. Churches do not have the right. All the churches in America and the world, they do not have the right to do whatever they think pleases God. They only have the right to do what actually does please God. Period. Here you have not only Jesus Christ as king of the church, but he is king of the world, and he is king of the atheist, and he is king of these kings, small k, and these lords, lower case L. Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. God the Father has set His King up on earth. Let us bow and worship and adore Him. And let's skip on down toward the end of this psalm and listen to what it says. Now therefore, O kings, show discernment. Take warning, O judges of the earth. Show discernment, king. Show You have a warning now. Judges and all the other leaders in the world, as well as everyone else. Worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling, the Bible says. Why? Do homage, it says, do homage to the Son, that He not become angry. And you perish in the way. Oh, I know there's governments today that are killing people unjustly. There's people, no doubt, today. There's officials today being corrupt. Maybe even having people murdered. Oh, they think they're getting away with it, friends. Friends, you haven't got away with nothing. And you who may watch this and mock at what I'm saying right now, you will not be mocking always. And what I would say to you is just what the psalmist says to these wicked, modern men and kings. The psalmist says to him, do homage to the Son, that He not become angry, and you perish in the way. For His wrath may soon be kindled, friends. That's one of the reasons I believe that God has shut the churches down. Is because he's tired of the nonsense that happens in them. It's just like Malachi 1 again, like I spoke about a couple weeks ago. God has shut churches down. One reason I believe is this. Because he is tired of the nonsense. There wasn't a man in the church who wanted to shut the doors because of the nonsense going on. So God has come down and finished the churches and closed them down. And who knows if they'll open again. We think we can play games with God. My friends, you play not games with God. And if you try, friends, God is not mocked. Friends, we better wake up in the churches. Not in this country. I hope the country wakes up. I'm talking about the churches. It's the churches that are in danger of judgment from God. Because of the weak-backed pastors that let everybody walk on the Word of God and they don't stand up for what's right. They disregard God when they listen to people. It will not always be this way. God's going to come and judge His heritage and judge His people. Don't you hear me? God is going to come one day. You've got to be ready for the judgment. It's coming. The judgment. Don't you understand? It's real. The judgment of God, my friends. The judgment is coming. Flee the wrath of God. Stop being fools. And give your life to God before it's too late. 
Oh, friends, don't you hear what it says? For His wrath may soon be kindled, the Bible says. But I want you to listen to this last part. How blessed are all who take refuge in Him. Yes, this world is lost. And unfortunately, much of what goes by the name of church is lost. But my friends, blessed is everyone who takes refuge in Him. This is, a, this is, a, this is in many ways, is a difficult psalm. Judgment. God laughing and scoffing at people on the earth. It's all right. Don't get me wrong. It's all right. And yet God is tender hearted and merciful to his people, to those who have bowed their hearts down to God. Friends, have you taken refuge in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you taken refuge in him? If not, I pray that you would, if not right now where you're watching, but you'll find a place today very, very soon. And come to God and ask Him to have mercy upon you. Oh, friends. Oh, God. May God have mercy on us.